Okay, we're gonna look at working with radicals. Um, we're gonna look at simplifying, adding and subtracting, multiplying and dividing, and also rationalizing. And so all of these situations you might see in these next couple of units, so you need to be ready to go. I'm gonna do probably one example per section, and then they will all be worked out and posted in the notes keys, so you can reference the ones that, you, that I didn't do in the video. I just didn't want it to be such a long video. So the next slide is a list of all the perfect squares. These are numbers that you need to be familiar with. It'll make it a whole lot easier if you know some of these. Do you have to know all the way to 25? No, but if you at least know to 100 or even to 225, that would be um, amazing. It would also save you some time. Okay, so let's look at how to simplify with, with radicals. And we've done this before, so the first one there you've done before. But I wanna talk about looking at number two, what to do in case you have a variable there. So we're gonna do just like we did before where we break this down with our factor tree. So if you think of two numbers that multiply together to get 20, or to get, sorry, 75, maybe we said three and 25. We know that three is prime, so we can stop there. 25 can break down into five and five. Both of those are prime, so I can stop. So when I go to put this under the radical, remember we put our factors out, but then we're also gonna list out our variable. And so since it's x to the third, we would have three x's. And at this point, going back to what we did at the very beginning of the year, we're looking for pairs. So I have a pair of fives and I have a pair of x's. The numbers that I didn't underline are gonna stay under the radical, so the three and the x that are left. And the numbers that are gonna come out, I have a pair of fives, so one five comes out because one pair. I have a pair of x's, so one x, and there is square root of 75 x cubed simplified. Okay, the next section we're gonna look at is adding and subtracting. And so just like with adding and subtracting with x's, you have to have like terms, which means the number under the radical has to be the same in order for you to combine. So let's look here at this first one. Um, see if we can break down 14. Well, we have here two and seven, okay? If we think about this one, we have three and seven, and we have two and seven again. Well, if I look here at the two and seven, three and seven, those aren't gonna simplify down. So what that means is I can combine this one and this one, but not the square root of 21. So if I have seven square roots of 14 and I'm gonna minus four of them, that leaves me with three square root of 14. I just added um, the seven and the negative four, subtracted them plus my square root of 21. And that would be my final answer because I can't simplify that down and I cannot combine those unlike terms. So now let's look at this one. Seven's already prime, so it's not gonna break down. But let's look at 28. We know 28, I can do four and seven. Four um, can be broken down two and two. Those are all prime. So I know that this is two times two times seven. There's a pair of twos, which means I can bring that out. So I know this really is two square root of seven. Okay, so let's go back. Actually, I'm gonna put that over the square root of 28 and say, I don't need that anymore. Now, if you look here, we can look at our radicals, they match. So I know I have like terms. If I have five square roots of seven and I have two more of them, then together that is gonna equal seven square root of seven. So with adding and subtracting, you've gotta look for your like terms. If they're not right there right off the bat, then you have to reduce down like I did with that 28. All right, multiplying. Multiplying, you're just gonna multiply outside times outside, inside times inside. So if we look here, we can assume that there's ones here, so one times one is one, then we can Multiply the inside, so nine and nine, which gives me 81. I know 81 is a perfect square, and so that would be nine. Let's look at some of these with some variables. I'm gonna go ahead and do number seven, and you guys can look at um, the notes key for number six. So outside times outside, inside times inside. So assume there's a one here, there's nothing there, so we can assume that. So two times one is two. And then we look underneath. I have nothing but a five. Remember when we multiply with exponents, we're really adding them. So if I have one M on the left, two on the right, that gives me M cubed or M to the third. 
and then I just have n squared. The one thing that you have to check is to see if any of those variables will break down. So really this is something like this in expanded form. Now I'm going to look for pairs. So 5 is not going to break down because 5 is prime, but I have a pair of m's and a pair of n's. So they're going to join that 2 on the outside. So one pair gives me that one, that pair gives me that one, and I'm left with a 5m on the outside. So remember with multiplying, outside times outside, inside times inside, and then start simplifying it down like we did in the simplify section. Okay, division. When you see a problem like this, my advice would be to first rewrite it. We know nothing's going to change with that square root of 5, and so we do know that square root of 49 is perfect, which gives us a 7, and that would give us that one. Okay, check the key for number 9, and then let's finish out with rationalizing. Rationalizing is something you do when your denominator does not cancel like that previous one did with the square root of 49. We cannot leave radicals in the denominator, so you have to do something else. So let's practice a few of these. If we look here at this negative, or sorry, square root of 6, it doesn't really break down into anything because that's all there is. So when this is much as you can do, you have to do what's called rationalizing. And so to rationalize, we're going to multiply by the square root of 6 over square root of 6. Whatever your denominator is, put that in the numerator and denominator. Because if you have the same thing in the numerator and denominator, that's really just a 1. Because if I write 3 over 3, that's just a 1. And when we multiply something by 1, it's not changing the value of it. It's just changing the way it looks. And that's all we need to do here. So now we're ready to multiply our fractions. We're going to multiply straight across. Those are not like terms. So all we can do is put them side by side. These right here give me the square root of 36. I know the square root of 36 is perfect. We can get a 6 and a 6 out of that. So we can break that down and say 7 square root of 6 over 6. The last thing that you always need to check is right here is the highlight. Does that fraction reduce down? This does not because those are consecutive numbers. So your final answer would be here. Okay, let's do the next one. Okay. Can't break down that 5 any, so we're going to rationalize, which means we multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same thing. And again, I'm not thinking through this. All I do is take whatever my denominator is and put that there. So now I'm ready to multiply straight across. So multiply what's inside. We have the square root of 15a. Multiply here. We have the square root of 25a squared. And so let's see if we can break this down any. We know that 15, I'm going to do this kind of upside down here, 15 will break into 3 and 5, which that's all, no pairs, so I know that one's not going to change. So I can go ahead and put that there. If I think about a 25, the square root of 25 is 5, and if I expand out my a's, I do get a pair, and so I bring pair out. Nothing to simplify, that would be my final answer. All right, I'm going to do one more with you, and then you can look at number 13 in the notes keys. We cannot simplify that square root of 2. It's not perfect. So we're going to rationalize. Multiply the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. Multiply straight across. They're not like terms, so they just go side by side. Square root of 2, square root of 2 is the square root of 4. We know the square root of 4 is perfect. So we can say 12 square root of 2 over 2. But, again, we always have to check, can I simplify that down? Yes, 12 divided by 2 is 6, so this gives me 6 square root of 2. Okay, any that I didn't do, look at the notes key, write that down. If you have questions, let me know.